we're going to be talking about building the ark. Can we go to that screen, building the ark? And when you, when you hear about that, building the ark, you think of Noah, right? And as I read the story of Noah and, and his, his story, it's an interesting story. Uh, I'm not going to be talking about Noah as much, but I'm going to be talking about building the ark. Building the ark. The Bible says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that we are God's temple. And so I'm going to be talking about building this ark. That's what this summer series is about. It's not about building a building. It's about building you up so that you can build others up. And there's a scripture I'm going to read. Uh, there's a couple of scriptures we're going to read. Um, next week I will have sermon notes for you, um, but not this Sunday because I'm just building a foundation today. And we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 9 through 11. And uh, to build, say with me, to build. To build means to construct. I don't know about you. How many, how many people in here, by show of hands, have ever built anything? You've built something from scratch. Ikea. That, that's called, that's like building too, right? It might fall apart on you, but it's still building. Ikea is the cheapest wood ever, but we all flock there, right? Why is all our furniture Ikea? And it just, you, you put a little something on it and it'll tip over. I know they just had a lawsuit. A kid died. He was pulling one of the drawers and it fell on him. And uh, they had a big old lawsuit. So they, they, um, they, what do they call that when they get all the, huh? Disc, no, they, they, what are they? Recall. There you go. They recalled all those dressers because they were falling. They were, they were top heavy. And so, um, so if you ever build anything, it's interesting. I love to build. I'm a, I, I love to do construction. We probably did 90% of the work in here as far as constructing lights and all that stuff and staging and all that stuff. And it's fun, but it's, it's more fun to rip things up than to build. I, I, you know, I, I remember here in the church, there was a, a pulpit here. That's why these things are out here. There was a pulpit here. There was a pulpit here. And, and I, was, I, was, I used to cause problems, let me just tell you. And the reason I would cause problems is because there was a very traditional church. They were very traditional. And they were like, don't move the pulpit because God speaks from that pulpit. If you touch it, God can't speak. That's how religious they were. And so, so I just moved things. I'd move them like six inches just on purpose to make them mad. And so I, I'd move them and, and I said, Lord, I can't wait. And there was this big old, there was this big old wall here. They had like benches here, like for a choir, and they had this big old wall here. And I, I just kept saying, Lord, I can't wait till I get to knock this stuff down. Because all this stuff is religious to me. This is this doesn't this doesn't invite your presence. And so there was a pulpit here. Nothing, nothing against pulpits, but I just didn't like it. They were ugly. They were just like in the way. And so, so when the church became ours, the same day I came in with the sledgehammer. It was just me. My wife was working, and I had a sledgehammer. I opened those two doors, and I said, thank you, Jesus. I was like, like skipping down the. And the first thing I did was I knocked these things down. I broke them up. And I'm, I was like taking a sledgehammer to it. I was like, I was letting all my anger out for so many years. I was letting it out on these pulpits. And I was taking pictures and showing it to my wife. I said, look, babe, no more. And I was breaking things down. And then I thought about how many people got saved from that pulpit. How many times the Lord spoke through people. And I was being selfish because I was thinking of just myself and how I thought it was ugly. And I thought about building the ark. And I thought about how many times in our own lives we've been not built up but built down. That somebody has poured into you, and instead of encouraging you and building you up, they've put you down. And so this whole series is about building. There's too many things that need to be torn down. And, and let me hear, I'm here to tell you that there are some things in your life that need to be torn down. But we're going to be tearing down, but yet building up. Come on, say with me, build up. Yeah. We're going to construct in your lives. We're going to construct some things in your life. And so here's this, the scripture. Here's what I understood before I read the scripture. To build, you must have certain things. To build, you got to have skills. It's I could, like I said before, I could give every one of you a hammer in here, and you could tear up a wall. But let me give you a spatula. Let me give you some thin set. Let me give you some tape and see if you could tape that up. 
It takes skill to do that. It takes skill to patch up. It takes skill to build up. And we're going to give you some skills. The second thing you got to have to be a builder is you got to be an encourager. You got to be an encourager. You got to be able to encourage people. Too many times, like I said, we build and we've torn people down. It's easy to tear people down. That's why the Bible says we got to watch what comes out of our mouth. The same tongue that we give praises to God is the same tongue that we curse people with. And so we got to be builders. Say with me, builders. I'm going to teach you in these next four weeks how to be a builder. And the third thing we got to be is a listener. We have to be a listener if you're going to be a builder. One thing I learned in the story of Noah was that Noah followed God's directions. He followed clearly. The Bible says that God said you need to get gopher wood and you need to get this wood and you need to make it this cubits. And he gave him all the dimensions and he said you got to have three levels and you got to do all this and that. And the Bible says, and, Mo, and Noah did as God commanded. He listened and he obeyed. And so to be a builder, you got to have skills. You got to be an encourager. You got to be a listener. 1 Corinthians 3, 9, 3, 11. It says, for we are God's fellow what? Is it up there? Yeah, say it with me. So for we are God's what? Fellow workers. His what? So we don't, when people serve here, we don't call them workers. We are servants. We serve God. In the end, there's not going to be any titles in heaven. Did you know that? Oh, you were the president of this and that, of the, of the men's club. You were the president of the women's. They used to have, my parents' church, they used to have all these titles. Presidente de damas and all this stuff. I'm like, what? What is all this? In heaven, you know what God says? That we are going to be servants. We are servants. He says, he says, well done, good and faithful servant. He didn't say, well done, good and faithful president of the men's club. We're all servants, right? So we are God's fellow workers, his servants working how? Together. We are working together. You are God's cultivated field, his garden, his vineyard. God's what? Building. And this is, what I'm, I'm, this is, the, this is the genesis of what I'm telling you. We are God's building. And we need to build each other up, and I'm here to build you up this, this month so that we can move this thing forward. If Noah did not build the ark, none of the animals would have existed. God created everything. We know this. But if you read the story of Noah, everything was destroyed. It says everything was destroyed, even man. Everything was destroyed, except for the animals that were on that boat. And I'm going to question God when I get to heaven. Why the heck did you keep the cockroaches on the boat? Lord, you should have left them. <laughs> hate roaches you are God's cultivated field his garden, his vineyard, God's building here's verse 10 according to the remarkable grace of God which was given to me to prepare for me for my task to prepare me for what? my task there is a task for each and every one of us to do when you say there ain't nothing for me to do that's a lie from the devil all of us have a task you are all given at least one gift one talent to be used for God's kingdom. Like a skill for master builder, I laid a what? A foundation. Today I'm laying the foundation for you. And now another is building on it. In other words, without the foundation, underneath this carpet is cement, which we call foundation. And without this foundation, this building cannot be erected. It cannot go up. Because you need a foundation to build on. And this is what we're doing today. Another is building on it. But each one must be careful how he builds on it. Verse 11 says, For no one can lay a foundation other than the one which is already laid, which is who? Jesus Christ. This is the foundation right here. Jesus Christ is the foundation. We don't do anything without Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's always been about Jesus. It will always be about Jesus. It's not about me and my wife. It's about Jesus. And we want to do his will. Are you with me? So, we're going to get into another scripture right now. And this is, laid, so I laid the foundation. The foundation is Jesus. He's the rock. And upon my rock, I will build my church, he says. And so we're going to lay this foundation. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. This is what the Lord gave us when we started the church. This is the scripture the Lord gave us before we, we were about to launch. He said, this is what you're doing. Verses 18 and 19 says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a what thing? A new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? 
Or another verse, a version says, do you not understand this? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I'm going to tell you some three, three things that you need to do to help you begin to build. Because there's a, there's a building or a, 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 yeah, a building, I don't know if you're building, but it's a, it's a building in Italy called the Leaning Tower of Pisa. You ever seen it? And it's leaning to the left or to the right. I don't know, but it's leaning. And it's, it's actually just a museum now. Nobody can go inside or anything because of the foundation. Because the foundation was shaky. The tower, as they kept building, it wasn't firm. The tower began to go to the, to the right or to the left. And so it started leaning and leaning and leaning. And so it became uh, uninhabited. You cannot be inside that building. You cannot go inside the building because of the foundation. Because the foundation is shaky. Say with me, shaky. And if we have a shaky foundation, God cannot build in our lives. He can't do anything in your life if your foundation is shaky. If, if, if there's some cracks in your foundation, come on, some of us got cracks in our foundation. I'm talking about our house. I ain't talking about you. Maybe you're thinking it's you. Well, if it's you, then you got some cracks and we're going to fix them. I was watching this show called, um, I love to watch DIY. Who watches DIY? Come on. Help me out. I love DIY. Uh, you know who loves it more than me? My wife, because I know how to do construction. And she's always on there, babe, you need to do this. And you need to do that. And I say, I need to sleep. There's a show on there where uh, it was a particular show, and they were fixing a foundation, a crack in the foundation. And what was interesting is they had to go, they had to dig about eight feet deep. And they had to go eight feet wide to fix a little crack. A little crack that looked small, but when they dug down deep, they realized it was shaking the whole house. It was moving the whole house. And this is interesting because I, I saw that I said, oh, man, that'll preach. Because too many times we think we have a little crack in our foundation, but when we allow God to get deep, deep, deep inside, we realize that's not a little crack. That thing is moving the whole house. And what God wants to do is he wants you to open that thing up. Because some of you don't let God get deep enough. You let him get a little bit and it starts, he starts exposing those things. You say, oh, God, no, that's enough. Put the dirt back on it. Step on it. And God says, I can't do nothing with you. Because that crack is messing up your whole house. It's messing up the building. And, it's, and, it's, and every time we construct on it, it's going sideways. This is why some people are, are, are in different relationships after different relationship after different relationship because the little crack is not really little. It's really big. See, I'm doing a new thing. Say a new thing. God is doing a new thing in your life. He's doing a new thing in your family. He's doing a new thing in your relationships. He's doing a new thing in your job. Come on, say a new thing. All right, so here's the three things that you have to do if you want God to do that new thing. Number one, forget. Forget. You got to put out of your mind. That's what that word forget means, to put out of your mind. It means to not remember anymore. We're talking about building. We got to build the ark. But I can't build anything if the, if the foundation is messed up. We got we to gotta remove the shakiness. We got we to gotta get down to the nitty gritty. You got to forget. Forget what, pastor? Forget what they did to you. Forget what they said to you. Forget what they said about you. You got to forget. Say with me, forget. Oh, that's the hardest thing you're ever going to have to do is forget. See, the Apostle Paul says, this one thing I do is, one thing I work on is forgetting the past. See, the Apostle Paul remembered who he was. He was a murderer of Christians. And every time he preached, I, re I, I could imagine that in the back of his mind, the enemy was always saying, remember when you did this. You ever do that? When you're talking, all of a sudden something comes to mind. Remember this? Remember how you said this? Remember when you did this? The enemy is great at reminding us of our past. But I'm here to tell you, you got re to remind the enemy of his future. You're going to be in hell, devil, so you might as well just shut your mouth because I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep on keeping on, right? So forget. Forget. How do we do this? It says forget the former things. Do not. The second thing is. Do not dwell. The word dwell 
in the Greek means to live as a resident. Let me, let me, let me help you here. Some of you are living in the present, but you're really living in the past. Because you haven't forgotten and you've, kept, you've stayed there so long that you're living as a resident in the past. Although it's the present. And because you're living as a resident in the past, you cannot enjoy the present and you will never have a future. Because you're stuck in what they did to you. You're stuck in how they, what they told you. You're stuck and you're, you're like in quicksand and God is saying, I want to help you out, but you keep dwelling. Because if you dwell, you remain, you stay. Listen, it's important, it's important to remember. Now, now, let me say this. It's important to remember, but don't dwell. And, and I'm here to tell you because how many of us, how many of you have scars, like, like physical scars on your body? Like you got hurt one time. I, I'm here to tell you the scar no longer hurts. But you remember, you could hit it, you could touch it. It don't hurt no more, but you remember what happened. My wife has a scar right here on her forehead. And um, I, I, I would always ask her, babe, what happened? I didn't ever headbutt you. Like, did I? Like, when we were sleeping, like, did I, did I give you one of those? She, and she remembers. She has a scar. It don't hurt. She remembers she was in an accident. How old? She, but how old were you? Five years old. She's mm, something. She's older. <laughs> she remembers exactly what happened because of the scar. But you guess what? It no longer hurts. It don't hurt no more. I remember. And this is what dwelling does. Dwelling makes us remember, but it still hurts. And this is why God says, no, 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 no. Forget it. Because you keep living back here. And when I'm trying to send a good man to your life, you keep living back here. And you think of the old dude and he messed you up. So you can't enjoy the good man that God's trying to bring you. You can't love the good man that God has bringing to your life because you're dwelling on the past of this dude that hurt you before. I'm trying to build a foundation. Say with me, foundation. foundation. Number one, you got to forget. You got to put out of your mind. But the second thing, you got to do, you can't dwell. Quit dwelling. Quit, quit thinking of how they hurt you. Quit thinking of what happened. It's over. Today's a new day. Why live in the past if God gives me another opportunity? Every 24 hours, I get a new chance at life. Every 24 hours. Guess what? Yesterday's gone. You can't remember. You, you don't re you need to remember it anymore. You need to, you need to stop bringing it back up. Because when you bring it up, guess what you're doing? You're dwelling. And when you dwell, you stay there. And you live there. And you live in your own misery. And you live in your own sorrows. And you talk to yourself. But you're really not talking to yourself. You're talking to that demon that's keeping you back here. And God is saying, I need you free. I cannot do what I've called you to do because you're dwelling. Don't dwell. Don't dwell. The third thing that the scripture tells us is, number one, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Here it is. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Do you not see it? You know why a lot of people can't see what God's doing is because they're so stuck. They're so stuck in the past that they don't want to see what God has for them. There's something great that ha God has for each and every one of you, but you got you to gotta get out of the past. You got to get away from the things that they did to you. You got to get away from the things they said to you. Listen, they said it. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's a lie from the devil. Words hurt. Words have hurt us all. But you know what? I can't dwell there. You know what? I'm, he I'm here to tell you, you got to be a person that lives in victory. How do I live in victory? Oh, Lord, I know that whatever they said to me, they said it, but I'm going to be better than they were. I'm going to be greater than they were. I'm not going to do that to my family. I'm not going to do that to my kids. I'm not going to say those things. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And so I love you, Lord, so I know you're going to help me. So if you're stuck in the failure and sin and discouragement of the past, you will never go forward to the new things God has for you. I'm here to tell you, there's new things that God has for your life. There's blessings that are waiting you. You just got to stop dwelling. Say with me, stop dwelling. Tell the person next to you, stop dwelling. Tell them, move forward. And here it is. I do my part. Here's three things that God is going to do. Number one, he says, I'm doing a new thing. If you stop dwelling, I'm doing a new thing. Guess what? It's already in the works. 
It's already there. It's coming to pass. Because I'm already doing a new thing. The second thing is saying, I am making a way in the wilderness. You know what that word, wilderness, in the Greek means? Or in the, in the Hebrew? Uninhabited land. Wilderness. There's no road there. There's no way there. It's all trees and it's all brush. And there's no way there. And God's saying, I'm making a way there. Where somebody said there can't be no way, I'm going to make a way. Why? Because I'm God. I can do all things. So I'm doing a new thing. It's already in the works. Listen, you know what God's waiting for? You. He's waiting for you to move. I'm here to tell you, listen how simple it is. I decided, you know what I told myself? I need to lose some weight. I know I'm yoked up, but I got to get more yoked up. Like Kev. I, I'm on swoles. I know that, Lord, but I got to get more swole. I got to lose a swole here, right? And so I just told my wife, babe, stop. I'm blaming my wife right now. <laughs> babe, stop with the soda. I don't need no more soda. And she's like, babe, be you. So I said, all right, I'm going to drink water. I don't care what you drink. I'm drinking water. That's it. I'm drinking water because I got to get back. You know, basketball season's coming back, and I got to get up. So I started drinking water, and I started realizing, I'm slimming down a little bit. It was a decision I made just to make one change. I'm not working out yet, because I'm still lazy there, but, but I made one decision. I'm not going to drink any soda. I'm not drinking, I'm going to drink water. And I started drinking water, and water started tasting good. And I took a sip of her soda. I was like, Nasty. Let me drink my water. One choice. Say with me, one choice. And listen, because I made that decision, there is after effects to my decision. There are consequences to my decision. And guess what? They're good consequences. Because I'm getting skinny. I'm getting my swells back. I'm getting my bounce back. And all it is is one decision to stop dwelling. To forget. It's over. Tell the person next to you, it's over. It's over. You ain't got to keep dwelling. It's over. You did it. Okay, it's over. I made the mistake. All right, get up, dust yourself off, and let's go. I'm making a way in the wilderness. And the third thing is, and streams. You know what the word streams is? It's rivers. Rivers in the wasteland. You know what the wasteland is? That's the desert. So where there is no life in the desert, God says, I'm making, I'm bringing water. I'm bringing gushing water into that area of your life. I'm going to make a river in your life. I'm going to make a, a, a river in the, in the wasteland, in the desert of your life. Where there has been no life, I'm going to bring new life. Because I am God and I have a purpose for your life. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has what? The new is what? Here. here. God is saying, look, the old is gone. The new is here. I'm done with your old life. Don't worry about it. It's over. You have an opportunity to start today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is your day to start fresh. Today is your day to start over. When, when can I start over? Every day. 24 hours, you get to start over the next day. Listen, I'm, I'm not here to tell you that you got to keep sinning. You need to stop sinning, but what I'm saying is that God wants to give you a fresh start today. This foundation is important for you. You got you to get this. We need a foundation. If not, we can't build on anything. And God is saying, I'm the foundation for you. I sent my son Jesus to die for you. So I, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone, the new is here. And Psalm 138 and 8 says this. With this I close. The Lord will work out his plans for whose life? The Lord's going to work it out. He's going to work it out. Whatever happened, he's going to work it out. It doesn't matter. Listen, I, I was speaking yesterday. I was speaking yesterday at this uh, event. Um, it's called BMAR. Broken, mended. And restored. And, and I was just, I was floored by this ministry. They asked me to speak in April. And, and so, um, honestly, I had forgot about it. It was so long ago. And then uh, our PA reminded me. And so I was like, shoot, I got to speak at this event. So I went. And I was sitting there. And I was, I was listening to them speak. And it's people that have been broken. It been, been in physical 
abuses, uh, physical relationships where they've been physically abused, uh, they've been mentally abused, they've been uh, uh, broken in churches, churches have hurt them, people that don't want to go to churches. I actually spoke at a fire station. It was so crazy. And so I'm standing here. I'm like, Lord, why did you bring me here? And I was standing and listening. I was like, man, God, everybody got a story. And I'm speaking, and, I, and, and I'm speaking about a story of the woman at the well with Jesus. And I just began to share my heart. And I'm seeing people just begin to weep. And some people not able to look at me. And, and I was just, I was floored at the hurt. And when I went there, I said, Lord, what is it that you want me to speak on? And the one thing was, was forgiveness. See, I, I, the ministry is great and it's necessary. But too many times we get together. And we get together with people that are going to kind of massage our areas that we need really God to open up. It's okay. I remember when he did this to you. It's okay. I remember when she did this to you. Or she said this to you. And we massage it and say, listen, you got to forgive. Because if you don't forgive, God cannot heal. Forgiveness is not so much for them, it's for you. And so I began to say these things. And I saw people begin to weep. Because they've been holding on to things that God said you need to really let go of. Because I cannot do anything in your life until you open up. And God is saying today, you need to allow me to open you up so I can really bring healing to your life so that I can lay that foundation and then I can begin to construct on your life. Because you are a building, let me tell you. You might be sideways or you might be straight. I don't know how you are, but you are a building. And some of you, if you're sideways, it's okay. It's going to hurt, but we're going to take a hammer to it and start knocking them walls down. Why? Because you cannot build on anything that's sideways. Because the more you build, the more it's going to tip. And then it will eventually fall over. You want God to do some things in your life? Forget the past. Quit dwelling. Quit living there. Because there's a present. You know why it's called present? Because it's a gift. It's called present because it's a gift. God has gifted you this day. See, tomorrow's not promised to anybody. Don't think in here that you're going to make it till tomorrow, till next week. Tomorrow ain't promised to nobody. It's important that you understand that if I forget and quit dwelling, then I can live what God has really called me to live, my destiny out. Come on, how many of you want to live in the destiny that God has for you? Come on, let's stand to our feet this, this afternoon. As you're standing there, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is the ultimate foundation you need as we call, we start with building this ark. If you've never accepted Jesus, or maybe you've accepted Jesus, but you've fallen away, and you said, Pastor, I want to come back home. That's, if that's you, I want you to raise your hand real high. Wave at me. Say, I want to I wanna accept Jesus. I, I want to I wanna come back home. I want him to be the Lord of my life. If that's you, just raise your hand. I want to pray with you. As you're standing there, maybe you said, man, Pastor, you're right. My, my building has been a little sideways. This is my prayer for you today. Allow the Holy Spirit to begin to knock walls down. Is it going to hurt? Yes. I'm not going to front. It's going to hurt. But it's going to be the best thing for you. God wants to knock some walls down in your life so that you can stop dwelling on the past and you can enjoy the presence and the future that he has for you. Will you pray with me, Father, in the name of Jesus? I thank you for every person in this place. Lord, I don't know how they've come in here, but I know, Lord, they've come in here for a purpose. Lord, you said that we need to forget the former things. We need to put out of our mind those things. We need to stop dwelling we need to stop living as a resident in the past. We've got to see it. There's something new you're doing. You're making a way where somebody said there can be no way. You are making a way because you are God. And so today I give you complete control of my life. So you can do whatever you need to do. Knock the wall down. Knock the walls down, Lord, that you need to knock down. Lord, so that you can expose those cracks in my foundation. 
so that you can begin to build what you need to build on my life so that I can help build others. I pray a blessing over your people today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.